So I'm one of those people who believe that when it comes to recipe videos, the more views equals better quality. If we want to make the best chocolate chip cookie ever, we gotta first type it into the YouTube search bar and then filter it by view count. And this is the first video that came up, and just by watching this trailer, I know that's something I don't want to click on. The second and the third most viewed videos are both from Tasty, and they turn out to be the same recipe. So with a combined view count of 67 million, we have to make this two-day chocolate chip cookie recipe. Let's get started. This is the two-day cookie. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna make some toffee. A lot of butter into this pan. Six tablespoons of butter into the pan. Light brown sugar and a good amount of salt. Three quarters of a cup of light brown sugar and a teaspoon of salt. Important that you stir pretty constantly throughout the process. So we'll put the pan on medium heat and start stirring constantly. The butter and the sugar are coming together pretty nicely. Butter and sugar are coming together nicely. Beautiful dark golden brown ribbons happening right now. Beautiful golden brown ribbons happening right now. Look at this flip. That's at 290, so that means uh, this is ready to come out. Once it reaches 290, it's ready to come out. Got a nice tray with parchment paper for the landing. A nice tray with parchment paper for landing. It's probably one of my favorite parts. Ooh. Oh, I love it. All right, I'm gonna make the same sounds. Ooh, what the hell? I guess the oil from the butter got separated and it's starting to look like the combination of number one and number two. Normally I just carry on, but this looks so bad. I'm gonna redo it. Starting with three quarters of a cup of brown sugar and then six tablespoons of butter, which I cut into cubes for better melting and a teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna stir it like my life depend on it as I trained my left hand in repetitive motion since I was 14 years old. And this is what the final product looked like. Something about it still seem a little sus, but at least it's better than the previous attempt. We'll put it in the freezer for about an hour. All right, while the toffee cools, we're gonna make some brown butter. The first thing you start with is a lot of butter. They gave the recipe in the description and it said two sticks of butter, which is a block. And that leaves the milk solids behind turn golden brown. And that is because of something amazing called the Meyer reaction. So what is a Meyer reaction? We don't know what the Meyer reaction is. I don't know exactly either, but it it's a chemical reaction that occurs in between the amino acids in protein when exposed to heat. It's responsible for the browning and flavor development in a variety of cooked foods, including but not limited to bread, roasted coffee, and grilled meats. In this particular case, since our butter is composed of water, whey protein solids, and fat, the continuous heating will evaporate the water, leaving the whey protein solids to be cooked by fat while gaining deeper color and flavor. So to summarize it, no color no. Flavor. When making brown butter, the water kind of melts off and evaporates. When browning butter, you have to make sure you're stirring constantly, otherwise this will happen. You want to go really slow and add one ice cube in at a time. After the butter gets nice and brown like this, we're going to put some ice cubes into it to add back the moisture. And here's what it sounds like, it's kind of interesting. All right, dude, we're gonna set you aside, but you smell great. That's what every sports team coach said to me when I was in middle school. First, um, dark brown sugar. For our dry ingredients, a cup and a half of light brown sugar. Good old white sugar. Three quarters of a cup of old white sugar. A lot of salt, actually. I think that's one of the secrets. Two teaspoons of salt. Baking soda. A key bump of baking soda. And some espresso powder. I think espresso powder helps knock back any of that fat or that sugar that might be a little too much. Well, Harness the power of espresso powder to turn this clump of sugar and butter into a healthy snack. I've never seen espresso powder before, and this is the closest thing I could find at Target. The star ingredient of the show, the brown butter. <laughs> Woo! And now we add in our brown butter. Woo! This is gonna be pretty dark compared to the other ones that we've done before. Like many other things, I do prefer a darker batter for the bigger and better experience. Four eggs go in. A one. Two, three, and a four. So he just used four whole eggs here, but in the description they said you only need two eggs. So I'm gonna do somewhere in the middle. Two whole eggs and two egg yolks. A lot of good vanilla. And a lot of good vanilla. You really wanna beat it until smooth, dissolved, 
mixture of almost like a ribbon-like consistency. You want to beat everything together till it looks like a really thick jam or syrup. Woo! This going to be a good cookie. I'm taking a break from consuming questionable ingredients because I haven't been feeling so well since I ate mold a little while ago. All right, dub in in the flour. Slowly incorporate to these beautiful ribbons of this butter and sugar mix. So we're going in with two cup and a quarter of all-purpose flour. It's gonna take a while to beat the flour into the batter, so as always, I will beat it on the couch. Nope, this is not what you think it is. It's actually a clam. While it looks weird, this is one of the longest living animals in the entire animal kingdom, with an average lifespan of 140 years. This is some um, nice chocolate in bars, and we're just gonna go in pretty large chunks. So we're gonna pile up some dark chocolate and chop it into big chunks. After about 30 minutes to an hour in the freezer, make sure uh, when you do this, you don't have any neighbors and it's not 2 a.m. It's 2 a.m., but I don't really like my neighbors, so. Oh, uh, yeah. I can't rap. <laughs> Thank God he didn't start. I'm already cringed out. What kind of idiot raps when he cooks? Two trailer park girls go around the outside. Get in there <laughs> with your hands. I'm trying to make sure the chocolate and the toffee are both evenly distributed. Some of these objects look pretty sharp, so I'm not gonna use my hands. We're just roughly folding them in till they're evenly distributed. Generous amount, almost the size of a tennis ball, but we're gonna spend two days. Might as well make a little bit bigger. Well, I spent 23 years trying to make them a little bit bigger. It doesn't work like that. Once all our dough is shaped perfectly, we'll align them evenly on the sheet tray. This recipe specifically requires it to rest for 36 hours. So why does resting make them taste better? Well, I actually worked at a bakery before. The reason why they were so good is because the owner always rested it for at least 36 hours. So I just realized I worked at a bakery before is the baking equivalent of trust me bro aka the most credible source of information. So we're taking the matter into our own hands. I'll put these in the fridge and rest it for 36 hours and we'll bake this one right away. We'll taste both and see if there's really a difference. Just in case you can't tell, this is not a portrait of my face, even though it's in the same shape. We baked it at 375 for 18 minutes, and it seems like the cookie lost all of its gooiness and became sort of like a flatbread. Overall, it tastes pretty bland and untextured. It's supposed to be a chocolate chip cookie, but somehow it tastes like a sugar cookie. We'll wait for 36 hours and bake them again. Okay, so these have been in. For pretty much two days now. After two days, they visibly got a little darker, so we're gonna pick the prettiest one, roughly shape it again into a ball, and then bake it at 325 for 18 minutes. I ended up baking two, and this is how they turned out. It doesn't really look like the original ones from the video. What a two-day cookie looks like, straight from the oven. Once again, my cookies are on the flat side, and there's not much texture on the surface area. It almost looks as if they're undercooked in the center, but I think aging it in the fridge for two two days helped this stay a lot thicker than when we baked it right away. To really take these to the next level, we're gonna use some flaky finishing sea salt. I couldn't find it in my grocery store, so I'm gonna skip on the pretentious, uh, I mean pl flaky sea salt. Okay, so vanilla milk, it's just a splash of vanilla. So he's serving the cookies with vanilla milk. I'm gonna make my own version, starting with some ice. Just some good old fashioned milk. And a teaspoon of instant espresso. And just to top it off, a splash of heavy cream. And we top our vanilla milk off with some water. Cheers. And there you have it. A two-day brown butter toffee chocolate chip cookie with flaky sea salt served with vanilla milk. So here we have it. A two-day chocolate chip cookie with vanilla milk. 90% of the two-day cooking time is just aging in the fridge. With the same logic, I can make the claim that all my radioactive chicken dishes took more than a week to make. Well, I think this cookie is looking pretty good, but I wonder what you guys think on Instagram. Alright, I'm gonna stack up two cookies and split them in half. Be prepared to feel some type of way. I 
I would totally just take a big bite like this, but for our video, let's taste it properly and rate it 1 through 10. The cookie is very gooey and you can see the melted toffee in the middle. Okay, as I'm editing this, I realize there's a fly in my house. Look. Let me know in the comments how to get rid of bugs in an apartment. Or chase the cookie down with some vanilla milk. It truly is an extraordinary experience. The cookie is perfectly cooked, crunchy on the outside, and gooey on the inside. The chocolate is nice and melted, and occasionally you get a little bit of crunchy texture from the unmelted toffee. This is really the best of all worlds. The chocolate adds a lot of that dark richness, and then the toffee provides that caramel butteriness, and is all enclosed by the cookie dough, which has a hint of coffee to cut through the fat and the sugariness. So overall, I'll give this recipe a 9.1 out of 10. I recommend all of you to try it at home. Thank you for 200,000 subscribers. It means a lot to me. I'm extremely excited about the growth of our community and I can't wait to share more recipes with you. All right, thank you. Not what you think it is. It's actually a clam. While it looks weird, it's one of the long. Let's cook a gooey duck clam. Let's cook a gooey duck clam. Nope, this is not what you think it is. It's actually a clam. While it looks weird, this is one of the longest living animals in the entire animal kingdom, with an average lifespan of 140 years. Let's cook it up. This gunk and cut right at the base. These thin cut pieces are perfect for sashimi. Here goes nothing.